Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars, and here is part two of Martian Bacterial Colonists of Earth. And I have to say that my sources are very compromised, so you can take this as science fiction um, if you want. And if you decide to, that some of it might be true, please use a very careful eye in analyzing what's been said. Um, so struggling for dominion of, of the human form right now since there are only a few uh, remnants of, of the demon realm that are miniaturized and genetically like stored in the human bloodstream uh, for the next great age, for the next age of darkness. We have a, a struggle for uh, like control or a leadership of the human form. In ages past, taking into consideration that bacteria have been here on Earth for what? For about four billion years. That's almost since Earth formed. And according to some estimates, that would be 40,000 great ages of Earth. A very, very long time compared to the human species, and that they were already an advanced race at the time when they landed here through their space explorations, very advanced in many ways. Uh, and so their feeling at that time may have been one of domination over Earth. Of course, sentient races arose. Uh, I have to look and see the connection, the dinosaur connection, to see what what they may have run into in their early days. Maybe more on that later. Um, they may have been responsible for some splicing of genes of the dinosaurs or the great age of reptiles uh, from that age with human genes and in genetic experiments. I have heard uh, today that they have ongoing genetic experiments for various reasons and that some of these go awry and then lots of people pass on. I think in the future we might look at negotiations with them if the human form persists in a third dimension during the, um, during the several thousand years of the Age of Light. Um, we might look at collaborations with them regarding their experiments uh, we might look at our own goals and their goals and see if there are human subjects that might be willing to volunteer to be tested in, in, um, in isolation so that there would not be a, like a great die-off of people if the gene experiments go badly, as has been the case with the HIV virus, uh, which I'm not saying it has to do with Martians, but that's an example of you know, an issue. And then there are the very lethal bacteria, for instance, the ones that are called deadly flesh-eating bacteria, which can't be good for Martians or for us because the subjects die, you know, so quickly. And so there's no space station to colonize anymore, so that can't be good. So anyway, there is this, this problem with leadership, and right now I'm addressing that as aligning my will with that of God so that the very best outcome may be reached for all the, like the, all those who colonize the human form and for the human form itself. So I'm suggesting in the future from that very high stance that there may be solutions, as with the meta prayer of the Buddhists, as with the Jain philosophy of, of never killing anything, even an insect, sweeping insects aside. You know, you have to have that point of view right now. So, uh, back to the issue of telepathy. The Martians, I, as I understand it, they want to contact um, others of their own species in other space stations. And, uh, and we want to contact other space stations, right? And so, I'm thinking that an accord could be worked out to provide time for us and time for them. Right now, what's happening is that when they don't like the topic that we want to talk about, from one person to the next person, they uh, cut off the telepathic communication. And then they try to influence us through subconscious, like programming, 
to open our third eye point so that they can get their channels across uh, without interference. And uh, so there's a sort of a war going on for the, for the third eye point. Until an accord is hammered out, may I suggest exactly balancing the energy of the, of the third eye point and as in uh, meditations that I've, I've explained previously. <laughs> uh, we need a person to, or, or a team of people to work with uh, the, the Martians with regard to their desire to return to their home world. Uh, we need to, to provide information to them about conditions on Mars and to see, uh, see if communication can be established with Mars. Maybe we could, maybe we could uh, see what kind of information Mars is transmitting and then listen to that so that they can interpret it if they need to. Uh, uh, and then we need to try to find out if it's possible then for them to achieve their dream of returning uh, and whether that would be beneficial to humankind to, to aid them. See if some middle path can be worked out that's beneficial to everyone concerned. So I'm, I'm putting out a request there to the light workers who can work with Ward C, Stargates, and so forth to, uh, to, uh, to consider negotiations with them in this regard. So that's quite a few, there's a few projects there to deal with and this is just the beginning of negotiations. Yeah, these ongoing experiments that are being made into genetic change, uh, we need to put forth our own list of uh, gene changes that we'd like to see. So for example, to eliminate various diseases on Earth. And I think that could be done right soon in conjunction with our consideration of their, their needs for proper experimental conditions. Always remembering that they've been here for all these millions of years and that they are an advanced species. So we, can, we, don't, we don't want to talk down to them. We want to talk to them in a very respectful way and hope that they will do the same. Uh, yeah, that's what I started to talk about is that maybe they saw the age of reptiles. I have to look. Sorry. Uh, I'll check on that later. But for sure they saw the rise of the human species from, uh, ape, from ape form that became bipedal and came down from the arboreal you know, habitat down to earth to a more, much more and more sentient being. And so... Um, and so, actually, our, what do you might call it, sold intelligence, and sold intelligence has occurred from their perspective in the wink of an eye, you know. So, their own mythos, their own social memory complex may not yet have completely caught up with who we have become as a species. They may consider us to be still simian, primate, and not sentient. They may, they may do most of their work with our um, gut brain, and from that perspective, they may think of us simply as animals. Many of them be, may be just just located there so so there's an information exchange uh, cultural information exchange that's going to need to take place with the utmost diplomacy I feel we can anticipate diplomacy from them but will we be diplomatic that's the question <laughs>